result, the outcome of this uh, general election will also decide where our future be. Uh, so maybe, uh, Senior Minister, do you, can you give us your, your view or your prediction of what the outcome will be? <laughs> you know, from my approach to the question of what is Singapore's future, you know that I was not predicting. I say it depends on you. Yeah. It depends on how we seize the opportunity. It depends on how we anticipate problems. So what will be the outcome? It's too early to say. It depends on how we are able to put our views across to the people. And it depends on how the other side is able to put their views across to the people. And it depends on how we engage. You see. So what we hope will be a rational population that listens to both sides' argument. You know, and then say, whose argument is stronger? And don't react on the basis of gut reaction. And uh, do not react on the basis of populist promise. You know, I can do this, I cut this, I cut that, I cut that, and so on, you know. And I can give you, uh, for example, I cut medical costs, I cut uh, GST, I cut, you know, income tax, and so on, you see. Singaporeans are not as stupid, they think through, then they decide, see, who is more credible, then look at the track record. And if Singaporeans vote on the basis of the best people in their view who can look after their future, who can then form the government, who can form opposition in parliament, on the basis of the best team, best people, best party whom they think is good for Singapore's future, then my prediction is the outcome will be good. Seeing that Singapore manufacturing is shrinking, and then I believe now we are below 20%, uh, so I was just wondering, is, are, we, are we looking seriously into manufacturing sectors or are we still trying to, to, to cast our big net across? So our policy is to uh, have manufacturing remaining as a very important component of our GDP structure. Uh, it's not down to below 20%, it's just below 30%, I think around 27 28%, and we try to keep it that way. So with new manufacturing, even though it's stagnant at about, say, 26 27%, it must be a different kind of uh, manufacturing. It cannot be just quantity, low-cost uh, labor, using up lots of land. So within the manufacturing sector, we have to restructure it to ensure that uh, we attract better uh, investments which, uses, which use uh, land more efficiently, also labor more efficiently. So that the, the intention is to keep manufacturing as a very important component. Then uh, I mentioned Infocom, you know, lifestyle services, because those are the obvious ones we can go into. A high end, you know, even arts, uh, the creative part, uh, animation, all these are creative uh, uh, services which we need. And actually moving into the future to sustain a very high income for us, what we need is, will be ideas. Now, ideas. If it can be a place where we come up with new ideas to do things, whether it's an incubator or whether you know, we can uh, grow something over here and then they manufacture elsewhere, well, I think that's what will bring Singapore forward. We just can't be doing things for other people. Manufacturing is very important. It serves as a magnet to hold other things together. Uh, the port, for example, requires the manufacturing. Without manufacturing over here, then maybe your port, I think, will be less useful. But the port nowadays is not actually transporting our goods. It's actually a service industry. It's an IT industry, in fact. You've got to track your containers, track your cargoes. So it's IT service-oriented, ship the services. We are providing a service uh, for exports imports, manufactured elsewhere. So rest assured that uh, we want to keep manufacturing as a very important component of our GDP.